toys and games, technology too. It's Marcus talking nerdy to you. Some other musical stuff. Firstly, I should probably mention that PC is my platform of choice, actually. But I've been a PlayStation fan since the beginning. I got the PS3 and the PS4 on launch. I owned PSP and a Vita. Vita means life. I've been to every PSX, and man, I wish they would bring it back. But anyway, onto the PS5. Design is obviously subjective. You're not going to make a radical design change without upsetting some people. But personally, I like it. Keep in mind, though, I think the original PS3 is probably the best looking console ever made. As for the PS5, I like it more now that I've seen it up close. I like the lights on the front, the tiny symbols on the system and the controller, I think are a nice touch. The UI is beautiful and fast. It's not nearly as accessible as something like the Cross Media Bar, which is kind of a favorite of mine. It needs feature parity with the PS4, like folders and things like that, but, you know, that will come with time. I like the quick menu and the integration with the PlayStation app. It's pretty cool, all the things that uh, it can notify you with, and just it's, all, it's well integrated. I heard reports of some people having issues, and, you know, that's it's kind of natural with any manufacturing process to have lemons and things like that especially something as complicated and new as this. But, you know, as long as it's software issues, those can largely be fixed. These kinds of things are always a risk you take when you're an early adopter. Uh, luckily, I haven't ran into any serious issues. There's something that's just so exciting about having new hardware, feeling like you're on the frontier of something. The only reason I actually got one at launch was because of backwards compatibility with the PS4. So you could probably guess I got the disc version. Not all the games are programmed to take advantage of the extra computing power of the PS5, but the ones that do are pretty impressive. You know, they might load faster, or have higher frame rates, or even higher resolution graphics and things like that, too. Playing Blood and Truth on the PS5 was a pretty cool experience. I can't comment too much on the actual PS5 games, because I only have the pack in Astro's Playroom, but I will say that that is a fantastic game. It had me smiling and laughing through my entire playthrough. It sounded really good with the headphones and the 3D audio, and it makes excellent use of the new controller. And the new controller is actually my favorite part of the PS5. The look, the feel, the build quality, all great. There's a debate to be had about the microphone and the light bar, but the haptic feedback and the adaptive triggers are literally game changers. Definitely the next level of immersion. I wasn't really excited about the PS4 launch that much. It kind of felt like more of the same, like maybe just a more powerful PS3. But that kind of changed when I tried PSVR. The controller kind of gave me that same next-gen feeling, which is kind of funny because I think the, tech's, the tech has existed for a while. And as far as the future goes, I'm looking forward to uh, HDR becoming kind of a standard thing. I love HDR. New uses of the controller, a new Ape Escape or Folklore, perhaps. I haven't cracked open the new Share Factory or bought any 4K Blu-rays, but I'm anticipating that and new game design that takes advantage of the SSD and 3D audio, and, of course, PSVR 2 is hopefully coming. So that kind of sums up my thoughts on the PS5. Uh, if you guys like this, you want to hear more of my dumb opinions, or uh, if you have any other questions or comments for me, feel free to hit up our YouTube or our Twitter page. Thanks for listening. Movies and games, technology too. It's Marcus talking. Nerdy to you. Some other musical stuff.